Hey guys, welcome to, welcome back to my channel. My name is Christine and I love to read dark and disturbing things. And today I have a book haul for you. <laughs> So this will probably be I, my second to last book haul of the year. I will have one more coming and then I probably won't have a book haul for quite some time. I am trying something new. I am trying to be a little bit more um, self-aware of my consumerism and I'm also just trying to appreciate the things that I already have as opposed to constantly feeling like I need to acquire more things. Um, I will get into that later because I will, um, at the end of the year, be sharing like my whole read what you own, my own spin on that challenge and how I'm going to move forward in 2024. But for now, let's just have fun and celebrate a good old fashioned book haul. So I have a stack of books here. Um, I was hoping to have my Aardvark book box to show, but there's been a delay in them sending that to me. So that will be in my next haul as well as one more book outlet <laughs> haul. So I have my book of the month. I have a few things that I just picked up on the side. I have some used books and I have a book outlet haul to show you today. First up, I have a book that I purchased for, for Kelsey over at Slime and Slashers. She has a book club on her Discord. And, and the book that we are reading in December is Disco Death Trap by Cameron. I'm going to say this wrong, Rubik. This has a lovely cover. This one ended up being uh, longer than I thought it would be when I looked at it online. I mean, it's just under 300 pages. It's not long. I don't know why I expected it to be a lot shorter of a novella, but oh, I love this. If you grew up in the same time period I did, these, the picture of these rental skates probably... Uh, bring back a lot of memories. So this one is about New Year's Eve in 1980 and um, they are going, a bunch of kids are going to be going to an all night New Year's lock-in at the Rollerville Roller Disco. So they're going to be locked in overnight and just be having a good time but something happens, there's like a big snowstorm and they're stuck inside and things start to go wrong which turns it into a disco death trap. So I think this is going to be a super fun read, especially if I wait till the end of the year and read it right like before New Year's. I think this one's going to be super fun. I can't wait to get to it. The next book was also definitely inspired by Kelsey at Slam and Slashers. This is a book that she has talked about many times and it was, I already have it on my Kindle, but when I saw that they were going to re, that they reprinted it and put the original cover on here, look at this fabulous cover kind of reminds me of Poltergeist. Um, this one is called Nelfs by Sydney Williams. I haven't read it yet, but I have been wanting to read it. This is about just a, you know, a four or five year old girl who watches this show called Nelfs. Kind of reminds me of Smurfs, but they're little green men, not little blue men. And she absolutely loves this show, but they start turning kind of mean and um, hurting people. And I've heard it kind of also described a little bit like Gremlins, but uh, I know that she loves this book so much, so I'm excited to get to this one as well, and I absolutely love this cover. Next up is a book <laughs> that I never, I solely purchased this because this is so beautiful. Well, I shouldn't say solely. It is a beautiful book. Um, it was a book that I saw being unboxed from a locked library box, which I think is a UK only box. I don't think we can get it here in the US. And the book that they got, I think in October was called The Book of Witches, which has this gorgeous art with orange foiling. Look at that. I love me some witches. I wish I was a witch. Um, and Look at the hardcover. I, I definitely want to start reading more witch books, which I have been. So this orange and black, orange foiling, freaking gorgeous. Why are there so many FedEx trucks going by out there? Um, so I will probably save this one to read around Halloween time in 2024, but I had to find it on eBay and find someone that was selling it that would ship it to the US. 
and she's gorgeous. This next book I purchased, I almost um, bought the last time I went to Barnes and Noble, but I did, I looked it up on Amazon and saw it was $10 cheaper. Plus they were having like a buy one, get one half off sale. So yeah, sorry, Barnes and Noble, but that is Dead 11 by Jimmy Giuliano. I don't know a lot about this one other than it is a book about um, an area or a town where everyone is obsessed with the year 1994 and like is still living in that year. Uh, that is a year that, that is a time where I was still in high school. So I have a lot of connection to, I guess, that time period in my mind still like that, you know, that time when you're growing up, when you're in high school or early college, where you just remember those times so well. <laughs> a huge bird just swooped down and I swear to God, I thought it was a bat or something. Okay, getting distracted, squirrel. Anyway, I don't know a whole lot about it other than they are stuck in this time period. And I know a lot of other people that I watch on booktube really enjoyed this book. And yeah, I got a good deal on it. So I was excited for that. And so then the other book that was part of that deal that I picked up was Stephen King's Holly. I really like the back here. That is really pretty. Um, I won't go into a lot about this because this is just about a character in some of his other books. I know I've read The Outsider and probably, I didn't really love that book to be honest, but um, I did like a character in there that was named Holly who seemed to be a reoccurring character throughout some other books. I think if you really want to follow her arc, you have to read like the Bill Hodges trilogy, this book, and one of the short stories in If It Bleeds. I have read Outsider and I read at least the first book of the Bill Hodges trilogy. So I might wait to read this until I read those other ones. Those aren't my favorite Stephen King books. So I guess I will give it a go and see how I like it. But I did like this character. So um, either way, I will be reading this at some point. Let's open my book of the month box now book of the month for november did not have the best picks i heard a lot of people complaining about it however uh, november is my birthday month and if you're like a bff of book of the month which of course i am um you get a free book in your birthday month so i think i probably could have written to them and asked them to let me pick another book next month or pick a different book, but I didn't really want to do that. I just wanted to follow the rules and I thought this would give me a chance to try something new. Um, there was also a book from last month that I had wanted, but I skipped hoping that I could maybe pick it for this month, but I did it as an add-on. So we have our little bookmark here. And the book that I wanted to add on was Alex E. Haro's Starling House. Um, I was really intrigued by this cover and just the feel of this book. I want to be honest, I don't know a whole lot about this um, because I want to go in blind. I'm just in it for the vibes and I assume it's going to be dark, kind of gothic-y, maybe partly fantasy tale. So um, I'm excited for that. And then the book that I ended up getting for my free book, it was after I actually read the synopsis, I was like, you know, this actually sounds interesting and I'm going to give it a shot. And it was a fantasy book by Isabel Ibanez and it's called What the River Knows. I didn't notice this, but I really like the, the gators on the front. Um, this one just had a description that, ooh, I like the side too. This one had a description about it being kind of like, um, like an Egyptian based fantasy or mythology type story. Um, one that a lot of people related to the movie, The Mummy, which I actually haven't even seen, but this was so much out of the realm of anything that I've ever read that I was like, why not? Why not give something totally different a shot? So um, I am excited to get into this because I think it might be a good time. So thank you book of the month for offering like these free, um, birthday books. I think it's a fun way to try something new. Um, next up is a a lot of books that I had gotten from Pango Books. So basically when you sell something on Pango, you get Pango Bucks and you can either turn it into cash or just use it to buy other books. 
and there was someone that was selling a couple books I was interested in and a lot of times these shops will or these people because usually usually they're just people selling their own books um had a bunch of other books I was you know mildly interested in and they had some kind of sale going on like if you spend $30 or something you get something off so the book that first caught my eye and you'll soon see why is called Spook Night because look at this fantastic cover um, I did actually look this up and it didn't have like the best reviews, but I could not pass it up. I will probably give it a shot next. Oh, even on the spine. I'll probably give it a shot next uh, Halloween season. And it looks like it's about someone, a man who moves to a small town. He's from the city and he soon finds out that there is some legendary specter that has been killing townspeople. Um, and as Halloween night approaches, spirits rise and panic spreads. So just like a little spooky Halloween folk tale that I will read. He was also selling um, a Clive Barker book called Weave World. And I recently did a Clive Barker book tag from Cliff over at Cliff Stark's Gem, Cliff Stark Gems. And it made me realize that I've never read any Clive Barker. And so I did want to um, read some of those books. So this was a great opportunity to do that. They were also selling a VC Andrews book. And I have read, I think I've only read one. Um, so I read, the name of it is escaping me right now. It was not my favorite. What the hell was it called? Oh, it's gonna drive me crazy. I do also own Flowers in the Attic, which I had watched as the movie as a kid and I recently rewatched it probably about a month ago just to see if it held up. And I still really liked that movie. So I don't know, this is, now I see it's the fifth novel in the Wildflower series. So someone tell me if you have to read these in order. I don't know if they just take different family members and talk about them. But this one looked like it was in good shape and it had this step back. So I think it was probably like a dollar or something. So I added it in there. But they also had this one that looked really interesting to me. This is called The Attic. And it looks like this one is about a group of three friends that are going on just like a girl's trip and they stay at a place in some inn and they start hearing screams from the attic and then her friends start dying one by one. Nightmare Inn, if you check in, you may never check out. The next one looked like a VC Andrews book, but it's not, it's called Someone, Somebody Come and Play by Claire McNally. It does have a very VC Andrews looking cover to me with this step back. And this one says it is about an old abandoned house that everyone tells you to avoid. And uh, two little girls decide to go in there. They find a way into this abandoned house and they find a room with all kinds of cool toys to play with. So they're really excited. Um, but their adventures soon turn deadly. Uh, one of them was killed. Someone's almost drowned. Kids are dying left and right. They have things in quotes on the back that I don't, it had, it doesn't tell you. It's like, come to the house. And then it says, come and play. And then it says, come and die. I don't know who's saying these things. They're just like on the back, but this looks like it could be a creepy fun time. Another one they were selling that I was interested in was Poltergeist. Uh, so this is a novelization of the movie and I have no idea if it's good or not, but I have, you know, I always credit Nightmare on Elm Street as being like the first horror movie that I ever watched, but that's actually not true now that I think about it. I think it's the first one that I personally sought out to watch when it's something that my mom probably would not have let me watch on my own, but something like Poltergeist was always on TV when I was at my dad's house anyway, and this is probably... I'm thinking about it, my intro into horror. Those Poltergeist movies were always on. And so I had re-watched the first Poltergeist a couple years ago. 
I still thought it held up. I didn't go past the first one, but I don't know. I still think it's a creepy story. So I'm excited to give that a read. And the very last one, I have no idea what this is about. It's called Neverland by Douglas Clegg. And it has like a house or a shed or something glowing with, a, looks like a little boy there and some creepy faces in the sky. Uh, it says a young boy joins his cousin in strange, sinister games, rituals that grow into sickening explosion of pure evil. Soon the tide of blood wolf and fury will rise, swamping the island in a raging, all engulfing sea of merciless terror. That sounds crazy. It doesn't tell me what it's about. But it sounds like it's about kids getting into some messed up situations and... I love kids and horror. I don't know why, like, that just taking, like, the innocence of something and exposing them to something horrible. I got issues. I got issues. And last up, I have... This doesn't even show you. I have a box from Books Out Book Outlet. Um... Book Outlet is kind of amazing and horrible at the same time because they will have a lot of books that are like they'll have these things where it's just like $5.99 and under and that's just what I look at and I looked at their horror section and if there was any book pretty much that I had any interest in I added it to my cart and then I would kind of like go through and kind of look up some books to see if I am I really gonna like this and I took some out. Um, but there were some books in here. It kind of makes me mad because there's a lot of books that I'm like, you know what? I bought that book full price and it's still sitting on my shelf and I haven't read it. So this is where it's coming, where I'm coming to the realization of you don't need to buy a book at full price unless you plan on reading it right away because you are going to find this book later on for like six bucks and be mad at yourself. So here we are. Sorry if the camera just moved, but I just, the book just literally, fell, the box just fell apart from the weight of the books and things got crazy. Guess what? I realized I'm an idiot because the first book, the first, the first book I see that I picked out was Clive Barker because I said I wanted to read more Clive Barker and it's the same book. Why am I so dumb and why? Look at the size of this. Like this is clearly a much bigger book. But then it's even fatter. Oh, dang, this is a long book. 704 pages. I guess on this bigger thing, they get it down to 650. But this is a floppy book. I don't know. Maybe I'll read one and keep the other this is my part of my problem you guys i think one was on its way to me and i had forgotten whatever um the next one i got is loot and i've heard i, I know a lot of people were really excited about this book when it was coming out and then i didn't really hear a whole lot about it later so i'm guessing it wasn't super great um you, when you buy stuff from book outlet sometimes you will get like stickers like this was obviously they bought this from Barnes and Noble and a lot of times it will have like a mark on the side um that doesn't bother me but if it bothers you it might be something you're not into let me just remind myself what this one's about it says that it's on an idyllic island the island is called loot in every seventh summer seven people die no more no less and due to that sacrifice they're able to the people that live there are blessed year after year with good weather good health good fortune despite war that's raging all around them so we have a newcomer that moves there and she thinks this is all superstitious nonsense just to keep people in line and it looks like maybe she'll be in for some surprises uh when that day comes on that seventh year so let me know if you've read this and what you thought about it because i can't remember anyone actually talking about reading it Next up is just a book that I, I, I see this book everywhere I go um, and I've always kind of wondered if I'd be into it. This is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. 
I think this is a series of three books by Holly Jackson. And this is about a popular high school girl who was murdered by her boyfriend. And then that, that boyfriend offed himself after that. So five years later, we have a girl named Pip who decides to re-examine the closed case for her final project. Just at first, she just wants to cast out on the original investigation, but she soon finds out that there's maybe more to the story that has been haunting this town forever. And now her life might be in danger. So I don't know. It's just something that I always see the title and I'm like, I think I might like that. Anytime I'm watching a video where someone's talking really highly of a book that they love and I think I'm interested in it, I kind of add it to my Amazon wish list and I just kind of let it sit there. It's like my ongoing mental TBR. And this book, I cannot remember who had this. I want to say maybe Michaela, but this is Chlorine by Jade Song. And so when I saw this on here, I was like, cool, this is something that was actually on my wish list and I get to check it out. And this, uh, I know that I was into it when I was listening to it probably six months ago, but I don't remember. So it says that it is a story about the trials and tribulations of growing up in a society that puts pressure on young women, their bodies, told from an adult perspective, a powerful, relevant debut novel of, novel of immigration, sapphic longing, and fierce, defiant becoming. I just remember that whoever it was spoke so highly of this, of that. Here we go. Here's one that after I ordered it and I was rearranging my um, books up here that I actually own this. I think I maybe got this from an Abominable Book Club because I have it in like a different looking cover or something like that. And that's why I didn't recognize it. And that's The Hollow Kind by Andy Davidson. So this is a hardcover. And then the other one I have was paperback and I think probably the UK version. So this is about a woman who inherits a um, estate from her great-great-grandfather. And so she packs up everything and moves to Georgia with her 11-year-old son. This estate is a decrepit farmhouse on a thousand acres of old pine forest, but she sees it as a perfect refuge, a safe place to hide from her violent husband and the chance to for a fresh start. But her son is feeling like there's something sinister living here. Something lurking beneath the soil, ancient and hungry. A power to corrupt hearts and destroy souls. So it sounds good. I'm sorry that I'm an idiot and bought the same book again. But that is life. The next one I picked up was a book because that I have read this author before. And I really quite liked that book um, by Simone St. James. So I think the one that I read was The Book of Cold Cases. I just remember it was probably about a four-star read for me and outside my usual genre. I do also have a book that I haven't read yet called The Sundown Motel. This one is The Haunting of Maddie Claire. So this was mostly an author buy, but also the title makes me just think that I will be into this. So it looks like we, our main character is assisting someone in um, investigating the haunted barn that's being haunted by the spirit of a 19 year old named Maddie Claire. Maddie hated men and she won't even speak to them even in death, which I have to credit someone for holding a grudge that long. So uh, this guy that needs to investigate it needs our main character's help to, to speak with her. So they basically need to find out what this spirit is wanting in afterlife and help her work through it so she can move on. All right, I have three left. So this one I feel like came out maybe around the same time that Loot came out and I saw a lot of people talking about it before it came out and right when it came out. And again, I don't, I don't think I've heard anything after. And look at that cool... I never saw a very up close cover of this. So I don't know a lot about it. It seems like it's something to do with an isolated chateau and some kind of parasite that is, kind of reminds me of like a lot of the fungus horror, but uh, some kind of parasitic horror thing going on here. Um, the next one is a book I know I've seen around, but I don't know if I've ever actually heard anyone 
speak about it. This is The Woman in the Dark by Vanessa Savage. And if you look closely, this set, like looks like a hole in the wall with some writing that says, I've been bad, I've been very bad, I've been bad. Um, this one is about a woman named Sarah who falls into a deep spiraling depression after her mother dies. She then even um, ODs on some sleeping pills and her husband and her children are very worried about her, obviously, and they want to help her get better. And the husband's idea is to move back to this beachside home where he grew up. He thinks that a fresh start will help her. And then it says, there's a catch. The once beautiful old house is now known as the murder house. Good idea, husband. It's been standing empty for 15 years ever since another family was brutally slaughtered within its walls. Nostalgic for his childhood though, he's adamant that this could be their dream home. They can make this work. Who cares that you are in a deep depression about your mother's death and want to be dead yourself? Why not move into this murder house? which you think he'd be, if he grew up in this house, he'd be a little more concerned about what happened into it, what happened in it after he left. But so all of the locals are warning them that this house is no good. And he keeps insisting that it's fine. And it sounds like she's the one that's gonna have to uncover the secrets of this house. Because of course, because she's the wife. Whatever, I'm here for it. And last but not least is a book called The Deep by Alma Katsu. This is an author that I, I don't think I've read anything by her. I just see her name so often that I think I have, but I've never actually read anything by her and I've been meaning to. Um, this looks like it is going to be some underwater horror. And I often confuse this one with Darcy Coates book that I think is actually called something very similar or looks very similar and now I own both so um I'll see how different they are maybe I could do a reading vlog maybe in the summer about some like underwater horror oh wow okay I didn't realize this says what really happened on board the Titanic it says something or someone is haunting the ship there's been mysterious deaths and disappearances and the guests on the Titanic find themselves suspended in an eerie unsettling twilight zone from the moment they set sail i did not realize that this was like a titanic retelling so that's kind of crazy so this is from the perspective of someone that actually survived that night and she's trying to put her life back together and figure out what's happened in the past so now she's working uh as a nurse on the <laughs> on the sister sh ship to the titanic um called the britannic and is that sounds like a recipe for disaster, but maybe she's trying to um, overcome her trauma. This sounds even more interesting than I originally thought. So um, I look forward to reading this. I, I feel like underwater horror is more of a summer thing for me. I, I guess because I equate that with swimming. So I will be checking this out in the future. All right, that's everything guys. That's everything that I have hauled. Um, like I said, I will have one more and I know it will at least contain another book outlet haul because I went back and there were more books like a few weeks later, as well as my artwork book box and maybe anything that I happen to acquire for my birthday or Christmas. And that's it. Then I'm reading my library of stuff. That is at least what I'm telling myself. If you've made it this far, leave me a roller skate emoji um, because I'm really excited to read this one and I will be reading this one by the end of the year. Let me know also if you've read any of these, if you're like, you really need to read this book um, and why does my hair keep doing that? <laughs> so let me know down below if there's anything that you think like, yeah, you got to get to this one. I absolutely love this book. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. I really appreciate it. I love interacting with you guys in the comments. So please leave me some comments down below and have a great day. Stay spooky.